Hey everyone, Jeremy, and today we're diving into the Samsung A35, a smartphone price from 400 euros, not including any potential discount, and is catching quite a bit of interest for people looking for a mid-range phone that comes with interesting features without breaking the bank. It was released alongside the Samsung A55, which I'll review very soon, so be sure to subscribe to catch up that upcoming review. Also, let me know in the comment if you'd like to see a comparison between these two models. Let's kick things off with the unboxing, and it's a quick one. The phone comes with a USB to USB-C cable, some documentation, and a SIM card ejection tool. There is no charger included, which is the case with Samsung Priceless series. In my case, I also got a pre-applied screen protector when I bought it from MediaMarkt, but that's an optional extra, or you can buy it separately and apply it yourself. There should be plenty of accessories available for this phone. Moving on to the design, the phone measures 8.2mm thick and weighs 209g. It features a flat glass back and rodent plastic edges. You can get it in blue, midnight blue, lilac or lime and it's IP67 rated for water and dust resistance. It maintains the design of the A series with its three camera sensor in the top left corner and at first glance there is not much difference between the A05s, the A15, the A25, A55. The main differences lies in the material used with glass back compared to plastic on the lower models and plastic edges here versus metal on the A55. However, if you use a protective case, you won't notice much difference between all of these models. On the top, there is a mic and a dual SIM or SIM plus micro SD card tray. On the right side, at the volume buttons and the power buttons, which has a raised portion. At the bottom, there are two mics, the USB-C port and the speaker. The phone offers stereo sound with the speaker at the bottom and the earpiece serving as a second speaker. Overall, the phone feels good in the end, and as I mentioned, it maintains the aesthetic of the A series. Moving on to the screen, it measures 6.6 inches and features an AMOLED display with Full HD Plus resolution, 120Hz refresh rate, and brightness of up to 1000 nit in automatic mode. The new feature this year is the use of Corning Goya Glass Victus Plus for protection. The screen is beautiful, offering sharp details and contrast. Many of you have noticed the size of the bezel, and indeed, they may be thicker compared to competitors in this price range. In terms of options, you can choose to leave the refresh rate adaptive to vary the speed depending on the activity, automatically switching between 120Hz and 60Hz. You can force it to 60Hz to save battery life. For colors, there is a choice between a vivid mode and a natural mode. In the vivid mode, you can also adjust the white balance, but it's not possible in the other mode. The fingerprint reader is located at the bottom of the screen. It's not the fastest one on the market, but it's working fine. Under the hood, there is a Samsung processor, the Exynos 1380, with 128GB or 266 of storage, and apparently 6GB or 8GB of RAM, depending on the version, although it's not very clear on the brand's website. Storage can be expanded up to 1TB with a microSD card, it's 5G smartphone that also supports Wi-Fi 6. In terms of performance, I'll display some benchmarks from N22, 2 Mark, and Geekbench. To put it into perspective, it's equipped with the same processor as the Samsung F54 from last year, so this phone will offer slightly higher performance compared to smartphones in the same price range from last year. The E55 is 100 euros more than the A35, for example, and it's a good improvement in terms of performance compared to the. For example, on Call of Duty Warzone Mobile, you can play the game at low visual quality and 30 FPS, which is decent but not exceptional. However, daily usage is smooth. Regarding the operating system, it runs on Android 14 with One UI 6.1, the latest version of the system. However, it lacks some AI features that were heavily promoted on the S24 series. In terms of everyday use, it might not be a big deal not to have them. Unlike their more expensive model, it doesn't support Samsung DeX via USB-C port to turn it into a kind of desktop computer. In terms of updates, Samsung promises 4 years of OS update and 5 years of security update, which is more than what competitors typically offer in this segment. For audio, we have stereo speakers and the sound is sufficiently loud and of good quality overall, whether you're listening to music, playing games or watching a video, but keep in mind that it seems that the bottom speaker is louder than the one on the top.
In terms of battery life, the phone features the 5000 mAh battery and supports a maximum charging speed of 25 watt, which isn't particularly fast, but it's also the case with more expensive models from Samsung, so it's not surprising. In terms of battery life, I use the PCMark application to simulate typically typical usage and drain the battery from 100% to 20%, allowing for comparison between models. I obtain a time of 11 hours and 49 minutes, which is roughly equivalent to what I've experienced with a Poco X6 Pro or Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus, both of which have similar battery capacities. This puts it a bit below one and a bit above the other. However, in terms of charging, it took me 1 hour and 37 minutes to go from 14% to 100% using a 120 watt charger, but not from Samsung. Perhaps if I had a charger from Samsung, it could have reduced the time if there was some kind of protection mechanism that allows for faster charging with a charger from the brand. However, it's far from the 20 minute charging time of the Note 13 Pro Plus, which comes with a charger for the same price. Moving on to the photo video section, the Samsung F35 has a three main camera, a 50 megapixel stabilized sensor, a 8 megapixel ultra wide angle, and a 5 megapixel macro sensor. At the front, there is a 13 megapixel selfie camera. Overall, photos from the main sensor are good with plenty of detail and minimal image processing to maintain a natural style. Colors are more saturated than in reality, but not excessively so with a good contrast. Unlike higher end model, there is no telephoto lens here, so you will have to use a digital zoom, which isn't too bad, it's best to stick with the main sensor for good quality. The same goes for the ultra wide angle sensor, which isn't bad either, and color match those of the main sensor, performing quite well for this price range. However, the 5 megapixel macro sensor doesn't offer much of interest and is just okay. In low light condition, even in completely dark environment, the phone manages to highlight areas that I couldn't see with the naked eyes and retain detail despite this, with good colors. However, this is the case for the main sensor, but not so much for the ultra wide angle with, with a much more noise. Selfie quality is good and my skin tone seems accurate and although there is no autofocus, I didn't encounter any particular issues. For video, you can record up to 4K 30fps, but only with the main sensor and the selfie camera. For the ultra wide angle or digital zoom, it's full HD 30fps at max. Nonetheless, it's always better to use the main sensor, even on more expensive models, and the colors may be a bit too saturated, but overall the quality is still good for this price. So as you can see with the selfie camera, we can film up to 4K 30fps. The quality is quite good considering the price of the phone. You can see that even my face is correctly light up, even though the sun is behind me. You can also see that the stabilization is working also pretty well because uh, now I'm walking, didn't pay really attention to my steps and it's still good, I think. So let me know in the comments what you think about it. Regarding prices, as mentioned in the intro, the phone starts at 399 for the 128 GB version and 449 for the 266 GB version, at least on the Samsung Friends website. You can find it cheaper by using promo code or taking advantages of different discounts, which are quite common on their site or find it on other sale sites. Compared to the Samsung A34, we have a new processor, a glass back, a new main sensor, Wi-Fi 6, better screen protection resistance, and to sum it up, we can say that Samsung took last year's Samsung A54 and put it into this Samsung A35, which is rather positive because it costs less and the performance of the model just above it from last year is still sufficient for many people even a year later. This makes for an interesting mid-range smartphone and considering that the price of high-end devices keep rising, we're even getting below the mid-range now, starting at 399 If you still have some questions, make sure to leave them below and I'll see you in the next one.